Hi, my name is Andrew Connell and I'm the Senior Vice Principal at Pinkwell Primary School um, and I'm going to talk to you very briefly about the maths assessment system that we use at our school um, that we introduced in September 2020 last year. Um, it was based on um, the mathematics guidance that was published by the Department for Education for Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 in June 2020 and we wanted to make sure that our maths assessment procedures were more in line at Pinkwell with our maths curriculum and our approach to teaching maths. And we also wanted to try and make the maths assessment system more manageable and less onerous for teachers and more focused on a smaller number of objectives that would make mean that teachers being more accurate in their um, assessments. We also wanted to make sure that the focus of our assessment was around children securing knowledge rather than just covering the curriculum. So we didn't want teachers to feel like they were rushing through the maths curriculum in order to make sure they completed everything during the year, but they were really focusing on making sure children had a deep understanding of the areas that they'd covered and that the majority of children in the class had secured that knowledge before they moved on. And this is rooted in our belief at Pinkwell that all children can be mathematicians and all children can be successful in maths. So for those um, of you who maybe have not seen the DfE guidance, um, I'm going to share that in a moment. But first, I just want to show you the very basic recording system that I created for our teachers to use um, at Pinkwell to record their maths ass assessments. So um, just on a Google Sheet, um, I put an introduction that just explains to staff around how they should use these materials. So it explains that it's based on that DfE guidance, which was written by um, people from the NCETM, um, and they're called the Ready to Progress criteria. So for those of you who are not familiar with um, this document, um, it's basically a small number of criteria for each year group, priorities from the national curriculum, that um, people at the NCETM have believe are the key things that children need to have mastered in each year group in order to be able to access the curriculum in the following year group. Um, I've put on there the link to um, the document itself and I'll just show you very briefly what that document looks like if you haven't seen it. So it's quite an extensive document as you can see if you read the whole thing but you can see versions where it's broken down into year groups and also on YouTube are videos which show you um, the materials that are covered for each year group. So there are tables that will show you the criteria um, across the school um, and showing how it moves forward in different areas of maths. So for example, here you can see the place value elements of it um, and showing how they link together across the years and you might see in some year groups that there's not an element that fits from that curriculum in that particular area and so it goes through the different areas of the maths curriculum number and place value number facts addition and subtraction um, multiplication and division fractions geometry and then you get more detail for each year group around each of the criteria and as you go through, it then goes into detail about how you would teach that criteria. But what was particularly useful for our assessment purposes was that at the end of um, each of the longer explanations about the criteria, it actually gets some example assessment questions. And this is an example from year one, where actually it's more, um, it may be some of the assessment is more practical rather than written. Um, if I just go further down um, to one of the older year groups and find you an example, um, then you'll be able to see that they can be used as written questions. They could be used with a whole class, but it's just a way of teachers, as well as using their knowledge of the children as they've taught those concepts, also to be able to do a short test or quiz at the end. So here's an example from year two's number and place value, where you've got some questions that teachers could use with the class as a mini assessment. Okay, I'm just going to switch back to my sheet. Um, so the expectation for our teachers is that they'll fill in the sheet each time they finish teaching one of these criteria. So, um, and in the columns, and I'll show you what the each year group sheets look like in a moment, they would just put a letter for either emerging, developing, secure or exceeding, which fits with our assessment system within the trust of where we put our assessments onto Scholar Pack at the different checkpoints. 
And then they would use these judgments at the checkpoints um, to make a decision about what they would enter. And they would base their judgments mainly on what they've observed the children achieving in the lessons while they've been teaching that concept. But as I said, they may also want to use the assessment questions from the guidance as a short test to help them make their judgment. And then for each year group, I very simply just put in the criteria. And as you'll see, so for year one, there's actually only um, seven criteria um, that teachers need to look at over the year. As you go through the years, there are slightly more, but it means that it really limits um, how many different um, statements teachers are trying to assess against, but we're really looking at that, what we could consider to be the key learning through the school. Um, and so that will be really clear for the next teacher about the strengths of the class, areas that they might need to focus on more. Also, as I said, really focusing on the idea that actually we want our children to really master um, the areas they've covered rather than rushing through the curriculum. Okay, so if this is of interest to you, what I would suggest you do is you have a look at the DfE Mathematics Guidance if you've not already done so. Have a read. As I said on YouTube, there are also videos for each year group that show you more information about that. Have a think about whether your assessment procedures correlate with your curriculum approach. So as I said at the beginning, part of the reason for us changing our assessment, maths assessment, to this approach was so that it fitted more with the way that we're teaching maths, which is very much based around a CPA approach um, with a language focus and also a mastery approach through our work with the Maths Hub and NCTM. And then think about, does your approach support the principle that children will achieve age-related outcomes? Because the message that is really important for us in our school is about ensuring that we have that expectation that our children are able to achieve those age-related outcomes and more each year, and to really make sure that we're teaching them in a way that allows them to do that. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching.